Enter the stars. Good morning, everybody. Bloodlines. The black goo. They time travel through the blood. It's all about the bloodlines. Now, back when the films, the alien films, Prometheus came out, we figured out that the black goo is the alien DNA that transcends time. And you're probably wondering how this can happen. Well, it's not literally time travel. But what they did in the ancient Egypt is that they used black goo. And they stored it in these what are called canopic jars. And this was the ancient pharaoh DNA. And this is why they so carefully preserved the internal organs of the pharaoh. They put them in these jars. And basically... The internal organs then deteriorated into this black goo. And they took all this time to preserve the organs in these canopic jars. So that one day, when time permitted, when technology developed, the DNA could be reanimated or reborn or cloned, right? And out of that would come the pharaonic clones. Now all of this plays out in the TV series Dark. And... It's actually on Netflix, and Dark is all about these canopic jars and the black goo. These are some scenes from Aliens. Actually, this is from, I think this is from um, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. They show these canopic jars with the black goo coming out of them. And this is how people are infected when they go to this planet. And these jars are inside of the alien spaceship. Here's an image here of this black goo. On the tip of the finger of one of the androids in the films here's some more images here and these canopic jars line the entire spaceship now here's where things get crazy because in the TV series dark this plays out again we're talking about Casey well look at the barrels with the nuclear waste they become the canopic jars just like the ancient pharaohs and inside of them in the TV series dark is the black goo and the black goo becomes the catalyst for how they time travel now we uploaded a montage last night that we'll be looking at this morning a little bit later in the in the show but I wanted to open the show with a little bit of background on this and how this works here they actually show this thing. It looks like a ball of yarn. And it, it's like black goo. And it spins around. And this is how the secret society in the Dark Series travels through time. Now, in the series, clones of each other basically emerge. They're not really clones, but they're the same person just in different timelines. So you might as well call them a clone. They keep running into each other. Um, in these timelines as they duck in and out of each other's timelines. And because of the dark nature and energy associated with this, they can recollect the past. Now, people always ask me, Casey, is reincarnation real? And I tell them, no, not for God's people. But think of these dark bloodlines who were born into intermarrying, this is how they can heighten their sense of recollection of their dark bloodlines. Or they may have been reanimated from some test tube from ancient pharaonic DNA. So you never know. They keep depicting it. And it could be true. I don't know. Now, in this series, the evil begins with an act of love. And by the end of it, season three we're on now. I just completed it. There's these two characters and they are at the center of the entire story. A man and a woman or a boy and a girl. And we discover by the end of the series that they represent Adam and Eve. And there's a big picture of Adam and Eve on the wall. And they keep staring at it. And it's through this love that they perform evil acts so that they can keep finding each other in the historic timeline. And I hope this is all sounding familiar because this is the biblical story. This is the serpent in the garden. 
the bloodlines. Now, they don't show you the serpent in dark, but he is there. Actually, they do show you the serpent because he is represented by the Triketra, which we're going to cover also. How time just keeps turning in on itself, and you can't escape it. So they've adjusted the story to trick you into thinking that they are talking about Adam and Eve, but what they're really talking about is the serpent seed line. Those are the bloodline that form this order, and they form this order called Sic Mundus. And of course, that's a line from the Emerald Tablets, the Triketra. This is the Triketra here. Now here's where things get creepy. And this is new information that you probably haven't heard before. On the right is their plaque, Sigmundus. This is actually at the gate of one of the uh, portals that they've traveled through time in. And here you see it, and this Sigmundus is from the Emerald Tablets. And there's a connection to the Emerald Tablets that is acknowledged for those who have watched the series that are into this. And it is a Triketra. Now, we were talking about the Triketra last week, were we not? Before Dark Season 3 ever released. This just released three days ago, you guys. We were talking about the Triketra last week in reference to the hospital group called Ascension. Their logo is the Triketra. They've got an A in the middle of it. But it's the Triketra, and we covered this for those of you that follow the channel. And what did Ascension do? They worked with Google to upload your medical data to the cloud and recommend treatment algorithms to your doctor through his computer interface. And we talked about how big of a deal that was and how that was so weird. Now, here we have it again. Now, for fair balance, this Triketra did appear in the first two seasons. But I want you to know that it was not on my mind when I honed in on that. In fact, I found it through another subscriber. She sent me a link telling me you need to look into the Nightingale, Project Nightingale with Google and Ascension. And I looked and I saw the logo for Ascension. This is how all of you fit into this because you helped me narrow this all down. The body of Christ, we get down to the bottom of this stuff. So it's not just me, it's all of you that are part of this. And lo and behold, the same symbol is prominent in Season 3 of Dark. And that just gives me chills. When we get synchronicities like that, that's just nuts. So, think about how this would fit in the Ascension Hospital Group, Google, uploading medical data to the cloud, your complete medical profile, which would include your DNA information to the cloud without your knowledge. Think of how that would fit into this bloodline theme. Time travel. What are they looking for? I believe they're looking for bloodlines on both sides, the good and the bad. Now, in the series, the Triketra forms a 33-year cycle around a central date. The central date is 1953. Now, there are many, many other dates in this time travel series, but the central one, going back to season one, is 1953. They go forward 33 years in the future and they go I'm sorry 1986 is the central date I'm sorry I misspoke they go forward 33 years to 2019 and they go backwards 33 years to 1953 that's 66 years now you're starting to see how Trump fits into all this the 66th floor penthouse the Apollo penthouse is there is a reason behind it. We're going to go into that right now. Now, I'm not saying Trump is a time traveler. Don't get me wrong. I don't want this to come off as some crazy lunatic, you know, putting puzzle pieces together. I'm not saying he's a time traveler. I'm saying there's something in the bloodlines here that is that is all the evidence is pointing to. So we're going to watch this montage that I uploaded last night. From the TV series Dark, Season 3, that just released 
three days ago. And then after that, we'll get into another bloodline, the Justinian bloodline, Constantine. Now, this is the nuclear power plant. This is the event that basically is in two timelines. The material from this timeline is what gives the, uh, the time machines power. Okay, It's the material. The nuclear material is what they use as energy. And you'll hear that in the montage here. This is the nuclear accident that happens in 1986. Remember, that is the central year, 33 years forward, 33 years backward, 66 years. Watch. Sixty-six years have passed and I understand. Of course, that's Trump's 66th floor penthouse. It was over 66 years before I finally understood how everything we know is bound together. That is the Triketra. And again, we just spoke about this last week before this released. I had no idea this was going to be a central theme again. But they basically reveal that the Triketra is a secret society in the film dark the secret society of time travelers who have access to the time machine who are jumping around in time trying to basically stop the adam and eve characters from dying here's google's project nightingale now this project nightingale was very very disturbing because they were already talking about project nightingale before cv hit the world they were it was the year of the nurses According to The Economist, and The Economist cover for 2020 had Nightingale on it because it was her 200th anniversary. She was the, one of the very first nurses in Crimea. See how all this fits together? Crimea, the Ukraine, this is where um, Chernobyl happened, which is also a central theme of the Dark series. It's the nuclear accident that happened in Chernobyl, 1986. It all fits together. And Flor uh Florence Nightingale was moving around in Eastern Europe and was dealing with plagues. Keep watching. Tesla's secret experiment. X-rays, microwaves, radiation therapy, radar, every harmful beam you can imagine was created by Trump's paternal uncle. He was involved in all of them. All this before confiscating the work of Nikola Tesla. So that was a video that we did probably two three years ago where we revealed john trump's connection to tesla the new yorker wyndham new yorker hotel where tesla lived on the 33rd floor we talked about how john trump was working with van de graaff at brookhaven labs during this time where tesla's last days were here on earth and that no doubt they had uncovered something, something very dark. Are you starting to understand the bigger picture here? Now, 33rd floor for Nikola Tesla in the Wyndham, New Yorker. 66th floor for Trump in Trump Tower. He topped Tesla. How was he able to do that? They're, they, I believe that somehow they, something with time travel was manifested out of Tesla work with John Trump. 
I have no doubt in my mind that they work together. No doubt in my mind. It wasn't just John Trump confiscating Tesla's papers. There was much more to it. Why? Because Vandergraaff was working with John Trump at Brookhaven just around the corner, a mile, two miles away from the where Tesla was living on the 33rd floor. You know, mainstream likes to hold up these historical characters and convince us that they were benevolent and that Tesla was trying to give free energy to the world. Maybe he was. The point is, is there's much more to the story. They're not going to tell you the whole story. Why do you think you have a company called Tesla? Now, they could have hijacked Tesla. Maybe he was a good guy. But why was he on the 33rd floor? Why didn't he pick the 34th floor? Why isn't history really admitting to us that John Trump was working at Brookhaven? We had to uncover that through the Van der connection. And if you don't know about the Van der connection to John Trump, do some research. Van der was at Brookhaven. Trump was, John Trump was working with Van der And of course, these themes of these electronic pylons shooting off energy opening up gates particles smashing particles particle accelerators opening black holes portals all of this is repeated in dark let's keep watching on the 33rd floor of the New York City Hotel John Trump worked for the U.S. National Defense. He was described by his peers as a pioneer in the scientific, engineering, and medical applications of high-voltage machinery. And now you know why Trump wants to go 5G whiz and beyond, and why he signed that while we were all in quarantine. He knows something, and he's not telling you. And all of it goes back to all of this. Radar, the very stuff his uncle was working on. John Trump was working on microwave technology. When are people going to wake up? Why do you think that Trump is pushing 5G whiz? It's because he knows something. They also said of him that John, over a period of three decades, would be approached by people of all sorts because he could make megavolt beams of ions and electrons, death rays, they were called. Now this is important because John Trump made weapons. Look at this. These devices promised to be effective tools for cancer therapy, industrial radiography research. Van der himself had founded the High Voltage Electricity Corporation with two colleagues, John Trump and Dennis Robinson, to build the machines commercially. Let's keep watching. Now there is the black goo in the canopic jar, the reanimated pharaohs. And though the rays he developed were deadly, it was reported that they were only used for benevolent causes. Cancer. So, National Academy of Engineering described Trump as a pioneer in scientific engineering and medical applications of high voltage machinery. James Melcher, Trump's lab director, is quoted as saying, John, over a period of three decades, would be approached by the people of all sorts because he could make megavolt beams of ions and electrons, death rays. What did he do with it? Cancer research, sterilizing sludge out of Deer Island, all sorts of wonderful thing, wondrous things. He didn't touch the weapon stuff. Yeah, right. Cancer research. I believe this is the thing that brought down the towers. And sterilizing sludge out in Deer Island. Although much of his radar technology was used for military applications. Now, 
and we have talked extensively on this channel about the theory of particle disassociation rays emanating from the nearby Brookhaven National Labs on Long Island. Our thinking is shaped by dualities, black, white. Now this is what I've been telling you guys for five years. Our reality, we are in the tree of good and evil. That's where we're at. The Bible tells us this. We're in the realm of dualities. This is why you and I and everyone else can't come together against the elite. Because we're thinking in terms of black and white. Instead of understanding that we're being played and the devil uses the dualities. Listen to what this woman says. He uses dualities to keep us all in the dark. Black, white, light and shadow, your world and Eva's world. But this is false. You need a third dimension to fulfill it all. The Triketra. That means a third world. Tanhouse. In the origin world. So in the series, they call the third world the origin world. But guess what? And they try to make it just like our regular reality. Well, the third world is heaven. We're locked out of the tree of life. That is the true third world. Notice how they do everything in opposites. So, instead of the third world being a positive thing in our reality, they call the third world the third world countries. You see that? Really, the third world is the tree of life. Outside of the trees of good and evil. Outside of the realm of duality that keeps us all separated. Keeps us all confused so that we can't come together. The devil plays on that and he rules over us all. Because he just keeps showing us, oh, are you the red or are you the blue? Are you the this or are you the that? Are you the Democrat or are you the Republican? And they at the top, their one world is the origin world on earth. They're all working together. I don't know how many times I have to tell people this because they just want to believe in, in Trump or they want to believe in Obama. The minute that you start talking like that, you've given in to the duality world and the, the devil's going to play you. Watch. Now, it all starts with Tannhaus's time machine. He's the first guy to build it. Tannhaus, hello, Biff Tanner. Trump is all over this series. Let's keep watching. Like you, he lost someone. Biff Tanner. Tanhouse. 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 And of course, uh, Biff's burning the money because guess what's happening right now? We just spent six trillion dollars. We're burning money. That's exactly what's happening right now. Biff Tanner, unbelievable. And like you, he tried to bring that person back from the dead. Now, I didn't show it in this montage, but at the core of this time machine, it looks like a CV. And you can go back and look at this if you watch the series. But it is a CV particle. And for those that don't know what I'm saying, look in the chat, somebody will help you. It is a C. Let me make sure we're connected first. Jeez. You guys have no idea. Some of the best shows I've ever done, I go back and I'm not even connected. Looks like we are. Very good. Let's keep going with this. But instead, he divided and destroyed his world. And created our two worlds. Now, biblically, I don't know who this Tanaus character is. Uh, he must have been 
there there must be because the the bible says that the elohim it's a plural now i've always thought that's the father and the son and the holy spirit right that's what i thought that that represented mentioned in the book of genesis but i could be wrong there could be some other component to this someone some celestial not celestial what's what's what i'm looking some spiritual part of god we can call it um made these trees these trees were created the tree of good and evil the bible tells us god created it but the the confusing part is the elohim part there was a godhead now jesus was part of that godhead and the holy spirit but even the holy spirit is kind of an enigmatic entity like what is that is that the moving force of god who knows but basically something created these tr these trees god created these trees but there was something that happened why would god create a tree of good and evil why would he create a tree of good and evil a realm of duality that eve would be tempted by and then lock imprison the entire human race in this frame of reality the tree of good and evil why would that be these are questions i hope that become clear to us and maybe though we won't have answers to that until the next life until eternity but i would like to know because that would be a fascinating story but here in dark they show this tanhaus character and he they're saying that he divided the worlds into duality okay so there's there's something going on here deeper themes <laughs> There's a chance it might work next try. I can't wait 33 years to try. I'm supposed to just hope this won't happen again? 33 years ago, there was an accident at the nuclear power plant. Somehow, the accident created some kind of strange substance. Now, originally, I thought that was a Joker card. I don't think it is, though. If anyone could confirm or deny that, that's why I included this. <laughs> If it is the Joker card, that would be the Trump card. And we also noticed that this winter eclipse tied into this. It occurred on just the day after Apollo's birthday. And that it formed a pair with another eclipse on the summer solstice. Winter summer. Today is the 21st of June, 19... So they mention the date that we've been talking about for three weeks, the summer solstice eclipse of June 21st that just happened a few days ago. We told we called that the Apollo eclipse. Fire and ice. The CV spam demic kicked off on Apollo's birthday, December 26th, and and that was the smile now. Make us all feel warm and fuzzy about it. And then cry later was the sad-faced eclipse that occurred on June 21st. And now we're all reaping the, the, the new world that we live in now. And people are like, this really sucks. But had we not bought the lie in the beginning, none of this would have ever happened. But because of the duality, we keep falling for the tricks. We keep falling for it. So they mention in the pivotal year, the center year, 1986, June 21st. Now this is really close to the date of Chernobyl and the disaster that happened. 86, the day our worlds were created. On the summer solstice. Tanhouse the clockmaker will open the passage for the first time today. Now you're probably asking why their lips don't match what they're saying. It's because this was done in another country and it's been dubbed over. And I'm glad that Netflix does that because there's a lot of foreign series that are really good. But I don't take the time to read subtitles, so they they handled it. So that's good. Tanhouse lost everything that ever meant anything to him in the origin world. Every pain tempts us to act, forms our will, 
Jonas and Martha must take his pain away so that he never looks for a way to undo everything. They must go to the... Jonas opened the passage in 2020, we know. The older Jonas had closed it in 2019 as well. After it had been open in summer for the... In all three moments, they left behind traces of cesium residue. But in the summer of 86, an accident happened here. A disaster. So obviously they're referring to Chernobyl, which still, there are traces of it that can be picked up in almost every country in the Northern Hemisphere. So, as you just heard, they just admitted, well, in the series anyway, fictionally, right? That and what remained, the substance in the containers, that makes it possible to travel through time. They admit that the substance in the containers makes it possible to travel through time. The dark energy from the nuclear material, it's all metaphor. Now you know what the real purpose of CERN is. They're looking for this dark matter, this exotic material. Particles that can basically travel through time or power time travel. Just like in the series, it's all nuclear. Now, we showed you in a previous video how CERN admits, their science admits, that when they send these particles around the accelerator, that they act differently, that they come back. Once they've collided with each other, they've changed, almost as if they've slipped through time. They become heavier. They actually change the makeup of the particles by setting them at the speed of light. And we showed you how they did nuclear experiments in airplanes where they flew with an atomic clock. And they flew at very high speeds. And the, the jet that flew at very high speeds had a different time on the clock than the, than the people on the ground. As if they had slipped a few seconds of time. Very weird stuff. Now, of course, sacrifice is required. And we're going to get into now how Justinian fits into all of this. Who is Justinian? Let's take a look at Justinian. Now, this is interesting because just last week we discovered the true identity of the iPad Go 2 mosque. A video since gone viral. I think it's up to like 15, 16,000 views. And we found out what the mosque was. We did some detective work and found out that the mosque really was all about the Hagia Sophia this is it right here and it all fit in this was built by Justinian the first and we also talked about last week how Trump was compared to this very emperor he was compared to him in the press, in the mainstream media, before he even got the presidential nomination. This was like back in 2015, 2016. You can look this up for yourself. Or just refer to the show that I did last week. We then looked at all the other similarities between Trump and Justinian. That on the summer solstice, just days ago, there were Christians at the Hagia Sophia and they had sent a personal letter on the summer on the summer solstice eclipse you guys they sent it to Trump himself to ask him not to convert the Hagia Sophia back to a mosque because somewhere back in history they converted this Hagia Sophia to a um, museum and now they're talking about converting it back to a mosque there is a tradition of conflict surrounding this mosque where it was run by Christians and then it was run by Islamic 
people and now it's like in a neutral state it is a museum but they're talking about turning it back into a mosque this is one of the central mosques in the entire world now ipet go to shows this dome collapsing from uh, jets flying overhead dropping munitions on it so this uh, this is why i think the video that we did on this went viral because this hasn't happened yet. Well, it has in history. There have been earthquakes that have caused this to fall in, but not the way it's shown in iPad Goat with jets flying overhead. So we're on. it's on watch now, right? Because if this is going to happen, it's going to happen very, very soon. So these Christians sent this letter to Trump on the eclipse, the date of the eclipse, while he was giving a speech in Tulsa, right, amidst the graves of Black Wall Street. See how all this is symbolic as he kicked off his campaign. And so we'll see. Are they going to convert this back to a mosque? We'll have to see. So we also covered how Justinian, just like Trump is Biff in Back to the Future, that Justinian appeared in a time travel novel. And this was written decades ago. Where a guy goes back in time and he meets like Justinian. And we also looked at the history of Justinian's rule and how he wanted to make Rome great again because Rome was falling apart. And he came and promised he was going to make Rome great again. That he was. We also looked into the fact that Justinian was compared to the two faced god Janus when it came to his religious policies. Let's see if I have that pulled up here. Now this is interesting because the reason why they said he was compared to Janus and his two-faced falsies is because he looked one way to Egypt and the pagans and then he looked the other way to Rome. He was trying to make one world religion under him. Now this guy was not a good guy. He thought he was God on earth and God tells us don't do that. Look, if Jesus was offered all of this stuff as a temptation and he declined it well then what gives Justinian the right to go oh, now I'm gone on earth it doesn't that's not good now I promise you the last half of this show will just simply blow your mind because we foreshadowed all this two years ago I'm going to show you that at the end of the show here so Justinian was compared by historians to the two-faced god Janus he also quelled the Nica riots. They were called. What is Trump doing now? He was also in power during the, the world's very first spamdemic. In fact, they named the spamdemic after him. There was called the Justinian Plague. And that is what ruined his plans to make Rome great again. Is this all starting to sound familiar? Is it starting to sound like history is repeating itself? Now, we know that Trump and Apollo are connected. He has a picture of Apollyon in his 66th floor penthouse. So I thought to myself, I wonder if Justinian and Apollo were connected somehow. And yes, they were. Through the Rosicrucian Manual. Now this was written in 1918. Now some people call it a satire. But the fact remains. Is that. It is. The fact remains that they mention. That this is connected. The Rosicrucian Manual. 1918. It mentioned this ancient shift in power. Under Justinian. In which Apollo, finding the world that is full of corruption, he appoints ten wise men to make reforms. So guess what? We're going to be on the lookout for this. Let's read this ancient prophecy. I think I got it right here. Here. Here it is right here. 
This is the Rosicrucian manual. Let's make this bigger. And we're going to read from 1918. Universal Reformation is a satirical work. Its most interesting contents are an account of the meeting of the supposed Congress for the purpose of reforming the world. What are we dealing with right now? The story is as follows. At the time of the Emperor Justine, Apollo takes a look at the world and finds it to be full of vices and wickedness. He therefore makes up his mind to call together a meeting of all the wise and virtuous men of the country to consult together how this evil might be remedied. Unfortunately, among all of them, there is none to be found who is, who is possessed of sufficient virtue and intelligence to give the desired advice. Apollo therefore assembles the seven ancient sages of Greece and three Romans. That's ten altogether. Marcus, Cato, and Seneca, a young Italian philosopher by the name of Jacob Mazanius, is appointed secretary. The congregation meets in the Delphic Palatian and now follow the speeches which were held. The sages talk the most egregious nonsense. Dales, for instance, advises that a window should be insected in the breast of every man. That sounds a lot like the VCs, does it not? So that the people could look into his heart. Solon, had, let me try to make this a little bit bigger. I can't even read it myself. Solon has become a, a communist and wants to divide out all of the something and private property so that it should all have equal parts. Okay, Bias proposes to prohibit all intercourse between the people to, in, to destroy the bridges and to forbid using ships. Cato des desires that God should be asked to send another deluge to destroy the whole fem feminine sex and all males over 20 years of age. And to request him to invent a new and better method of procreation. Okay, that's all happening right now. They're trying to figure out a different way to make all, to make us procreate, right? Population control. All the sages dispute and contradict each other. Now all this fits into Janus because that was in the series Utopia. Janus was th what they used to sterilize human race through a VC. We just covered that. See how all this fits together? And they're repeating that here. A different method of procreation, a better method. All the sages dispute and contradict each other. And finally it is resolved to cite the diseased century. Wow. And make it come into court so that the patient may be closely investigated. The sentry is brought in. It is an old man with a healthy looking face but having a weak voice. They examine him and find that his face is painted. And a further investigation shows that not a single part of his body is without some disease. Wow. The, sur the savants then come to the conclusion that they cannot cure him. But they do not want to adjourn without having it appear that they have done something very useful and important. So they impose a new tax upon cabbage, carrots, and parsley. That's weird. And you see the food prices going up. They publish a document with a great deal of swagger and self-praise. And the delighted people jubilate and applause. The meaning of this pamphlet, which was written for the purpose of throwing ridicule upon a certain class of people who wanted to improve the world at once, and to show the absurdity and possibility of such an undertaking, was plain enough, and it seemed incredible that its purpose should have been misunderstood, that there were many people who took the matter seriously, showing the extreme ignorance and want of judgment of the common people of those times, and forms an interesting episode of the story of the historic and intellectual evolution. So... That is very interesting. Now, inside of the palace of Justinian is housed the head of Apollo. Now, this palace encloses the Hagia uh, Sophia Mosque. Let me show you that. Is this it here? Here it is. Here you see the Hagia Sophia Mosque. This is the, they call this the Great Palace 
of Constantinople, Istanbul, Turkey. Now, some of you are looking at this and you're getting chills because looky here, that would be the Hippodrome. Remember we covered the Nika riots two years ago? The ones that are happening right now? And we talked about them being sports riots between sports teams. They had different colored jerseys as they would run around these horse races. And how the pagan calendar was incorporated with the Christian calendar. So right after Lent was over, they would then open up the horse racing season. The people, the two-faced people who bought the lie, they would then engage in chaos as the Hippodrome season opened right after Lent. That's when everything went wild. And this is the spirit of the two-faced god, Janus. History is repeating itself. Christian one day, the participating in riots in the next. Now those riots, the Nika riots, ended up destroying the Hagia Sophia had to then be rebuilt again by Justinian which is what Trump will do he'll rebuild the country after the riots he'll be the hero listen to what we did two years ago this was February 16, 2018 we're connected this is the Hippodrome let me show this to you this is crazy And in this U-shaped arena from ancient Rome, you can see that there were very pagan symbols within this. We had the three pyramids of Giza here. I'm going to show you some of these other structures that they had here. They had a serpent coiled around itself with a cauldron, just like the Olympics. A cauldron held up by serpents. Now we were covering this during the Olympics and we noted all the stuff but little did we know that it would come full circle to today. And it was on this middle part of the U-shaped arena. This is the arena here, the Hippodrome. And the middle part was called the Spina. The Spina, like the spine. The serpentine spine. They have the Delphi tripod, the bronze obelisk, Egyptian obelisks on the spina. Now, let's make sure we're connected here. Let's do this. Was symbols resided. And the Christians were in this 100,000 person Colosseum with all the rest of the pagans, part of this annual racing calendar called the Hippodrome. This was all about chariots and teams and team colors. That's me. Sorry, this happens sometimes. It knocked off, especially after we are on high detail for about 30 minutes. Then I'll be in the chat with you guys and we'll talk. It was the Hippodrome. And this was all about a rivalry between the blues and the greens. Don't you think it's interesting that the Eagles are green and the Patriots are what, red, right, and blue, right? So this is back then. There was these riots that were happening after the Super Bowl. And see how history just keeps repeating over and over again? Watch. And then these civil wars broke out in the city between them. The most severe of these was the Nico riots, as I talked about in the opening of the show. 30,000 people were killed. Now, to me, it's just really weird that this shooter from the... And we... Now, if you look at Wikipedia, let's... Say, All right, so we're not going to cover There's that. Obviously, a, that's very so have, sensitive stuff right now. 
but I wanted to show you how the pagan calendar was linked in to the uh, Christian calendar. This all surrounded Lent, and you can go back and watch this if you want. Um, maybe I'll include. I think I included a uh, a link of this video, so you can see this the whole thing all together, and see how the, the these Roman rulers were trying to combine pagan and Christian values. You can't do that. It leavens the whole loaf. Now, things get even more interesting because Janus and Apollo and just uh, Justinian, they all are linked together. Here's another historical document here. Cyclopedia Metropolitana. And this one talks about Apollo. And it says here, Apollo is Janus, the two-faced god. So now you see the link, and now you know why the show Utopia was talking about Janus. It was basically foreshadowing the Trump presidency, Apollo himself, and this historical document is talking about how the two are connected. Let's read a little bit of this. He deduces the custom of primary offering which Janus received and all sacrifices to other gods. Some, he continues, suppose that he represent Apollo and Diana in one, and there is a similarity in certain of their attributes. As Apollo was Cupios, and I don't know what those words say, so Janus, named a Janus, is represented with a key and a rod as guardian of all gates and roads. Nigidius indeed affirms that Apollo is Janus. So we have that. We also have this. This is talking about the Apollonic history of this area of Rome. Okay. And how Constantine basically wanted Apollo and Christ combined into one. Let's read a little bit of this. Make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it. Frequently, it says, Christ appeared rigid and solemn like a Roman emperor, referred to as Emperor Mystique. This is out of In Truth, A History of Lies from Ancient Rome to Modern America. He was sometimes represented as Apollo, following the Roman tradition of emperors venerating the sun god, including Augustus Nero Constantine himself. The depiction of Christ is a shepherd tending to his flock, was also borrowed from Greek and Roman mythology. The figures of Orpheus taming beasts with his music was also a good shepherd. So was the Trojan warrior Ionus, the founder of Rome in the poet Vigil's epic. Early Christian iconographers would have been intimately familiar with these pagan traditions of deities and symbols. Christianity was rising as a new religion in the late Roman Empire, but its symbolic inspiration owed a great deal to the pagan world. So, see how they're trying to combine the two? Two centuries later, Justinian and Theodora were ardent believers in the power of iconography. So they also leveraged this uh, Christ image. The famous Byzantine mosaics in the church of St. Vital in Ravenna, built in 547, show Justinian as a Christ-like figure, dressed in a Tyrian purple robe. We just covered that in the iPad Go to Decode. We showed you the jar of purple derived from the seashells along the the Caspian Sea. His dark eyes gazing at the viewer, his head surrounding, surrounded by a glowing halo, holding a bowl for the bread of the Eucharist. Imperial administration and soldiers are positioned on his right, the white robed clergy on his left. Justinian is thus represented as a Christian emperor, both worldly and divine. On another mosaic panel in Saint Vital, we see Theodora haloed like a goddess, wearing a jewel encrusted crown. Remarkably, Justinian and Theodore are represented just as prominently as Christ. See how they're trying to elevate themselves, perhaps revealing something about their exalted self-importance. And it talks about all the Christian symbolism and how they use that to rule over men. What do we have here? Oh, this is the one that talks about Janus, Justinian, I'm sorry, being compared to Janus. This one is the history of the Byzantine Empire. See, I show you guys proof of everything. I'm not just making any of this up. These things are all connected. This is here. 
the achievement of a church unity between the East and the West, between Alexandria and Antioch and Rome, was impossible. Justinian's government, said one historian, said one historian, was in its church policy a double-faced Janus, with one face turned to the West, asking for a direction from Rome, while the other, looking East, sought the truth from the Syrian and Egyptian monks. That's the Rosicrucian manual we just looked at. Now, what is Rosicrucianism? Well, this is the Wikipedia page on Rosicrucianism, and you can look into that. This is not good, okay? Secret order of the Rosicrucians. They help run the world. So, that is the show for this morning. I already put links in the pinned comment for those that want access to that. Let's see if we can try to answer any questions you guys have in the chat. Thanks for the almost 500 of you that showed up this morning to figure out what's going on in this reality. So, what can you do? Stop buying into the right-left paradigm. Stop buying into rulers of men. If you have a problem with that, if you believe the Bible is telling you that you're supposed to listen to your authorities, then you got to go back and watch my videos on that and how all of those biblical verses were misinterpreted. They were misinterpreted. The Bible didn't change. It's the way they were interpreted and translated that made it look as though you're supposed to obey corrupt rulers and you are not. You are not. Because a lot of, see, they've brainwashed us Christians into believing that we're supposed to listen to our rulers. And that's why the Christians are so beholden to these rulers, especially rulers that claim to be Christian. But as I just showed you, Justinian was two-faced. He was really a pagan, wolf in sheep's clothing. But he used the idea of Christianity and lied about it to gain power over the people. You see, this is when it all began. So, let's take a look here. Now, that was a lot of history. And, you know, they make history boring on purpose when you go to school to learn it. They do that so that you don't get a real taste of history and get down to the deeper meanings and truth about why the world is the way it is. It's all about bloodlines. It's all about history repeating itself over and over. And there's an element of some kind of time travel. I don't think they can literally walk through a gate, but that's what they want us to believe. But it's more about bloodlines and the black goo and reanimation and cloning and maybe even memories that resurface from strong bloodlines that makes them feel as though they are a clone. Now, we've talked about other elements of time travel. We've talked about the fallen ones that once were in communion with God in heaven. They were once good angels. All angels used to be good angels. And we talked about how maybe some of the plans that God had for the future, the timeline, were revealed to them. So when they fell, they became basically some, a time traveler that's trapped in the timeline, right? Whereas like an angel that stayed... Um, you know, loyal to God, they stayed in heaven with God, but then they drop into the timeline, right? To help us, we have many, many stories in the Bible of angels dropping into our timeline and helping people. And then they go back to their timeline, which is eternity. That would be a time traveler. Angels are time travelers. They come from the eternal realm into the finite realm. And they can come anywhere in the timeline they want. They can come here or back in Jesus' time. That would make them a time traveler. But in their world, it's eternal. They don't have a sense of time there. They live there with God. They're communing with God. So demons are trapped time travelers. And angels are time travelers that can move around in the timeline. So you could think of time travel as real in that, in that way. And the demons, are, the demons have some knowledge of the timeline. Because they once communed with God, or they may. I don't know if God would have wiped their memory. But it's interesting to contemplate all that, is it not? Alright, looks like the chat's catch caught up. Um, let's see if you guys have any questions.
nonlinear time. Exactly, Boomer Bear. You got it. So we're in a linear timeline, and heaven is a nonlinear timeline. They can see begin. Well, God can see the beginning from end. I don't know if everyone else can. They probably don't. But they're in a different timeline, and we don't even know what that's like. We can't even wrap our brain around that uh, because we don't live in it, right? Okay. Now we'll be back on here tomorrow. Yes, thanks. Thanks. God's promises. Trump is Gemini twin. I forgot to add that to the story. Janice is the twin. Gemini is the twin. Trump is a Gemini. More, a little bit more proof. But we'll be back on here tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the eclipse that never happened during the Apollo 12 mission. It never happened. I'm going to prove it to you. The astronauts were not in a trajectory to have seen and witnessed an eclipse because the moon would have been way too big and it would have overpowered the sun which is much which they tell us is much further away i don't believe it is but they tell us according to their according to their scientific laws they would have been impossible the moon would have been much too big it would have overpowered the sun behind it they were only one day out one day out from the moon it takes three days to get here I'm going to show all that to you. We're also going to do a real life comparison. I've got a video of me holding something up, looking at something way off in the distance, and then moving that object closer to, to my camera. We're going to look at that. And all of this is going to fit together. You guys are going to see the beginning from the end. You're going to see how all of this fits together. Yeah, the, Ben says dark is very confusing. I stopped trying to focus on the timelines, and I just looked at the imagery and symbolism behind it. Because it is very confusing. They're jumping all around the place. You don't even know who's doing what. and Yeah. And they show them all at different ages. You know. As children. As as young adults. And as old people. And so that's where it gets really confusing. But there's always three. It's the, tri the Triketra. Right? Which is what I just showed you. Now the Triketra. In case you didn't know. Is a very occult and evil symbol. It's used in all kinds of pagan mythology symbolism and why would a catholic organization like ascension use that as their symbol that's just weird the catholic hospital system so there's a lot more going on to this we'll get down to the bottom of it i think we already have cut through a lot of this i think we're getting very close to finding out some of these ultimate truths so um yeah we got to figure out the mystery of the tannic thanks bill Coffee and tea, tannin, biff tannic. We'll dig into that one day. We'll do a show on that in the near future. But there's something about that. Tannin usually means like stained. Okay, maybe that's the mark. Mark of Cain, the stained mark. Okay, jeez. Uh, Always drama on the shows, the chat sometimes. It just breaks my heart. People can't get along. All right, this was a long show, and um, so we're going to go ahead and end it here. See you guys bright and early tomorrow morning, exactly the same time. Take care and be safe, everybody.